to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. Ryan here, going to have a discussion on Pluralock. This is a company that um, I've just been introduced, and the more I get into the due diligence on this company, uh, the more uh, attracted I am. This is uh, a company that has a lot going on right now. It has gone through a transition. Um, it has gone through multiple phases in, in the evolution of the company, and here we sit in 2024. And, and I'm going to give you six reasons as to why I think that this company is worth, for a lot of people, a second look, or for a lot of people, a first look. And the source of this information for this video is going to come right out of the fiscal 2023 report. And, and I understand that here in 2024, Pluralock is doing a lot of great things. We're going to cover those as the company is able to uh, mark developments on those improvements. But I, I just can't help but to look at the vast improvements between 2022 and 2023, respectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link uh, the um, uh, 2023 fiscal report for you guys. So you can go in there and read it yourself. I'm going to highlight what it is I was able to to pull out of uh, that document. Um, I would give you my my bearish or bullish thesis, which I think it's trending in the right direction. So this is going to be an angle of, of, of bullish thesis now in the face of what I would consider to be a very interesting time for Plural Lock. And I'll get into that when I talk about the sentiment of the company. Uh, but for the most part, across the board, there are a lot of pieces between the lines that need to be uh, highlighted with regard to Plural Lock and what they bring to the table. Um, th this company has gone through a massive transition um, with the restructuring of the shares. Um, we all know that. Um, I'm certain that there were people that were involved with the company who who took a digression in their stock investment. And and for those people, I, I you know I I hear you. But that doesn't mean that the company it needs to be bashed for the remainder of its existence because here's the thing, and I'll just jump into my very, very first bullish thesis, and that is the poor sentiment around this company. If you go onto social media forums and look on stock twits and uh, and the stock forums, uh, Pluralock is – there's nothing but – it's like a feast of, of, of vultures in there tearing this company apart. When I look at sentiment around a company that is going through not only a transition on some fronts, I, I actually look at this and I'll pose this to you guys as a new opportunity, okay? A lot of you guys suffer from living in the past uh, with regard to expectations around a company and because those expectations don't meet your performance – um, the remainder of your life is now devoted to bashing the company, okay? Anything that they do, anything that they say, anything that they are trying to do with regard to cost-cutting initiatives, you know, signing contracts, exploiting new areas of business, which we'll talk about that. It doesn't matter because your experience with the stock itself was negative for an acute amount of time. And I think a lot of people miss in the microcap space the amount of time that's actually necessary could extend multiple years, multiple years, and multiple downtrends and 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 gyrations in the stock price that can shake any professional investor out of a stock, let alone a retail investor who is ill prepared to enter into the position in the first place. I actually look at this dismal sentiment, at least on the social forum, uh, as being a, a bullish tailwind for Pluralock. And I, I think that it is incumbent upon investors to try to define a, another side of the argument. Now, I'm not here to give you my opinion. The 2023 financial statement for me said everything that I needed to know. Uh, so I'm not looking to come and jump up and down and provide you hype. I, I'm looking to uh, uh, highlight what is public facing for Pluralock uh, in their investor and, and news media section of their own website. Um, I'm going to provide you the documentation that I used in the making of this video. I can't put it in front of you any more clearer than that. But I cannot help but to notice that sentiment surrounding this name, at least from that perspective, 
We're going to look to tip the scale a little bit and really tip the scale in a way that is less, if not entirely fact-based and less opinionated by focusing on what the good things are going on with Pluralock instead of a bunch of social media opinions who have had a bad experience with the stock and have made it their lifelong desire to come and bash the stock. So number one is sentiment. And I do look at you know, buying and maybe perceived the worst times as potentially being that opportunity for future returns when we look at some of the additional things I'm going to talk about. Number two are the transactions. Okay. I talked about this in my introduction to Plural Lock on the Independent Investor Channel. I'll make a link for you in the in the description uh, to my intro. But these guys are doing business with the who's who, top down, Canada, US, big government, state government, and private institutions, large institutions. They're doing business across the board. And the addition to the board of directors with um, Ali Hakim Shada, which it's really interesting to make the correlation between his current board seat with Pluralock and businesses that he has been associated in years past. I will not name names. However, he does not get involved with businesses that um, are trending in the wrong direction. Furthermore, there are similar correlations from this particular entity, Pluralock, making significant year-over-year -year revenue across a lot of different verticals within their business, IT, hardware, software services, professional services, et cetera, et cetera, patents over their, um, their identity um, interface, fantastic stuff that they're doing. They've proven that they can make money. That's not my opinion. That's a fact. Go check the balance sheet. But the similarities I see in their transactions is that Pluralock across the board has won some incredibly sizable contracts with some who's who in the in the industry. I'll name a few. Canadian Air Transport Authority, the Department of Treasury, there's a small one for you, the Department of Health and Human Services, the state of South Carolina, the state of uh, uh, North Carolina. Uh, financial services companies, the Department of Defense, there's another small one for you, and the Department of National Defense, just to name a few. Uh, more clarity can be found in the uh, listing of transactions in chronological or order as they happened in uh, 2023 um, to really show that Pluralock can win business. And listen to um, to Ian, the CEO, talk about his ability and the company's ability to leverage those existing contracts as not being one-offs. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite. These are sticky contracts that once they once they get that place at the table, they can really start to leverage that into existing uh, um, existing business for Pluralock because. These companies need these services from both small cybersecurity companies, which Pluralock is, as well as the large, okay? So transactions, very, very impressive. Number three is the revenue. The revenue year over year increased to 70 million. Great. It increased marginally. Margins increased uh, it, of note, okay? But the revenue that Pluralock is able to make is not reflective of a company that trades as a, at a current valuation um, uh, that it that it that it does. Thirteen million for Pluralock is is laughable, with regard to the revenue that they made in 2022, and then compared year over year to 2023, they'll be on track in 2024 for continued upward momentum, and for the stock to not get any type of favor right now just speaks to. Uh, the negative overtone in the micro cap space and plural lock has been drugged down by that. Okay. We need to look at that. We need to look at the 2024 progress and kind of trend a couple of years of previous uh, revenues together, services provided, uh, business from existing businesses. And those are the things that I will be eagerly looking at in 2024. But the revenue is fantastic. You cannot scoff at a company that's pulling in $70 million a year. The next is cost cutting. They just brought in their CFO uh, CFO in June of 2023. Uh, Ian, uh, the CEO, has spoken about his importance to um, the initiative for cost cutting. The big line item that I saw was the OPEX 
from 10 million spent in 2022 to an anemic 2 million in 2023. This is a comp. You don't do that, guys, without taking a concerted effort um, at that. Okay. Furthermore, I would consider that the around 494,000 uh, of of overall savings of the company in 2023, um, or to use the words of of Ian, the CEO, attributed to the uh, onboarding of the new CFO with the company. These are all small pieces, not one uh, entirely contributing, rather a positive contributor to the whole in what Pluralock is looking to do. Okay. Um, number number five is the uh, addressable market here for cybersecurity, and I think Pluralock, with every new contract won, is finding their place within an industry that does not discriminate, okay? Just because Pluralock is a, a $13 million microcap company does not mean that they don't have a place at the table. Again, read between the lines. I'm not looking to provide you conjecture. I'm looking to provide you facts. I just went down the list of who's who that Pluralock rubs shoulders with on a daily basis. You don't think that they're leveraging those opportunities and winning more business, which brings me to my last positive attribute. attribute and this is probably the most bullish attribute out of all six that I've just listed amongst many others that I chose to keep off of this list of six. And that is finally the professional services uh, piece to this, okay? They've got revenues coming, significant revenues coming from other uh, areas of their business. But the professional services is the one that is growing. And I presume, if I can give you one conjecture, based on and predicated upon the uh, relationships that they've been able to solidify in years past. Pluralot gets in the door and they are sticky, in maintaining that customer. Why? Well, I presume that they're providing services that are attractive, they are uh, um, uh, valuable, and that the company has assessed a need. And once that is established, it is very, very difficult to, to ruin that relationship. In other words, it's plural locks to screw up. But to take the professional services revenue from 742000 in 2022 to $2.8 million uh, just shy of uh, is nothing short of remarkable. And I look in 2024 as that being an absolutely positive catalyst. I'll be uh, eagerly awaiting uh, the next sub subsequent couple of quarterly calls uh, by Pluralock to see if that they can follow through on or add any color to that fast-growing segment of their business, not to be dismissed, right? Not to be hated on. Uh, again, I'm quite certain that I could have picked out some negative attributes about around the company. And my friends, they would have been fact-based, all right? But the last thing I will do is go onto a social media uh, forum and start bashing a company that is looking to transition and augment their business in a total addressable market in the cybersecurity space that is absolutely necessary in today's world, in today's business environment, both government and private and institutional businesses alike. And Pluralock is delivering on all fronts, whether or not you like it or you don't. Appreciate you tuning into the video. Again, I will link the color surrounding the information that was disclosed in this video for your own enjoyment and perusal and review. There was a lot of takeaways from that, a lot that I could not mention during this offering, but I wanted to bring this to your attention. The top six things that stuck out to me as being maybe a catalyst or a turning point for Pluralock here, when everybody's dismissing a company, that's usually the time you want to take a step in, especially with all the positive tailwinds that are going on in a very, very hot cybersecurity market. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video. Subscribe to the channel, notification bell, hit your comments at the bottom of the video. If you have any questions for me, man, hit it up. I'll respond to you. Thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.